My name is Mrs. Jackman, and I'm going to bring you the program called Folk Art Tree Painting. This is a museum corner program that ties in with our exhibit that we have right now called Tell the World a Story, Folk Tales from Around the Globe. So um, a few things, you should have your take and make bag. In your take and make bag, you should have a little paint set, watercolor paint set with a paintbrush, a Sharpie marker, which is a permanent marker, and a couple of pieces of white um, multimedia paper. This is good for painting, it's good for drawing on, um, so that's why we're using this paper. Um, and you might even have an extra piece if you wanna do something after we're all done. Okay, so I'm going to um, angle the camera down so that you can see uh, the table and what I'm working on, and I'll give you some different tips and ideas. Um, and then we'll get started with our painting. Sound good? Okay, so the first thing that you'll wanna do is get your table ready. Um, I put down a piece of cardboard, but you could use scrap paper or newspaper just to make sure that the table stays clean. We are using a permanent marker and some watercolor paints. Um, and then we're gonna start with one piece of paper. Um, also supplies from home that you might want. I have a, um, a cup with some water in it to rinse out my paintbrush in between colors. You might wanna get a cup of water. You might wanna get some paper towels just in case. Um, I'm gonna put that off to the side. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is you're gonna start with your one piece of paper placed horizontally to you. Um, that's the side to side. And we're going to draw some tree trunks with our Sharpie marker. Um, and let me see if I can try and draw this so that it's best visible to you. I'm gonna start on one side. And the thing about folk art is that it's sort of highly stylized. It's not necessarily realistic. So you can start at the bottom or start at the top and draw a line. I'm gonna make this my bottom and this the top. And then I'm gonna draw a line down that's a little bit wider at the bottom, like the trunk of a tree would be. And then I'm going to kind of color it in. You could use long strokes to color it in or little short strokes to color it in. And it's okay if some of the paper shows through. Maybe that's what the bark of the tree looks like. After you have your tree trunk drawn, we can draw some branches on your tree. And we can draw them in different ways. The way that I'm gonna try this one is sort of like straight-ish lines. Draw one up at the top for the top of the tree. They're sort of like a letter Y and you wanna alternate. So I have one here and then one on this side and then one on this side. And I'm gonna come down a little further and bring one out from this side. You can draw it as a Y. Maybe it has an extra little branch on it. Maybe the branches further down are a little thicker. We can add an extra line to that to make them look a little bit thicker near the tree trunk. Shows where they're attached to the tree. Maybe this one has a couple of lines coming off of it. And then you can attach it to the tree with a thicker line. So this is one tree. Now we have room for another tree right here. We're gonna draw this to make it look like a very skinny tree because not all trees look the same. And sometimes in the folk art, we can do things that are abstract, that a real tree might not really look like this, but once I draw it, you look at it and you say, hey, that's a tree. So for this one, we're gonna draw a squiggly line down from the very top and you're gonna go back and forth and back and forth, a little bit bigger and bigger towards the bottom. Mine's a little shaky looking. Bigger and bigger. And you can look at this and go, hey, yeah, 
I could tell that's a tree. We're gonna keep drawing trees. The next one, this was a very straight tree trunk. The next one I'm gonna do is going to be a sort of wiggly tree trunk because not all trees are straight up and down. Sometimes the wind blows them. So I'll start up here and I'm just gonna make sort of like a very slow S kind of curve down. Ooh, that tree got blown around a lot in the wind and wider at the bottom and skinnier as you go up. Maybe in here it needs to get a little bit thicker. I'll do that. So skinny at the top of the tree, thick at the bottom of the tree, and then we can color it in. And this is your artwork, so you can make your trees however you like. There's my squiggly tree. Now I have a fun way to make branches on this tree. This is sort of whimsical, maybe something you'd see like in a cartoon, something animated has like little balls at the top, little curvy lines. And did you ever notice how like on one side, it's easy for yourself to make curves and on the other side, they kind of don't want to curve. Guess what? You can turn your paper around. You can turn your paper however you want to be able to make these little curvy branches that come out from the tree. It's easier that way or easier this way. We're gonna make these curvy branches. Maybe this one has an extra little branch on it. Curvy branches, curvy branches. Should I put one down here? I'll put one way down here. Curvy branch with an extra branch. And then I will thicken it up where it meets the tree, right? Because where the branches meet the tree, they're usually a little bit thicker. And then as they move out from the tree, they get a little bit thinner. And then I'm gonna put these little balls on because I think they're cute. Or dots, you can put some dots on them. Maybe they're berries on the tree. you can come into the library and we have quite a big fairy tale and folk tale section so that you can pick out some folk tale books and you can read them and you can also look at the art in them and take a look and see what kind of trees how do they draw the trees in that book I wonder how they painted them in this book and then our last tree over here we're going to draw a big, strong tree, straight, and then straight down. This one has a big trunk, and I'm gonna leave this one mostly white, but draw sort of little lines to indicate the bark on the tree. Just little short lines to draw the bark on the tree. Maybe there's more in some areas. This is a part of the tree that has more bark. There's less in other areas, however you would like to do it. And then for this one, we're gonna draw a line straight out to the sides. And again, if it's easier for you to turn your paper, turn your paper and draw the line straight Sometimes it's easier to draw down towards yourself than it is to draw away from yourself or sideways. Well, maybe it's easier for you to draw sideways lines. You can turn the paper this way and draw the line sideways going out. Some of them go out very far. And some of them stay close to the tree trunk. This is your art, so you can make it whatever you'd like. And then we will get our paint ready and I will show you how we can quickly and easily add some paint to our trees. 
So you have a little paint set. I'm gonna put mine on this side now. So what you're gonna wanna do is put your brush in your water. You don't need to see my water, right? Put your brush in the water. This one first. And I think this is sort of a, uh, maybe, orange tree. Maybe this is a fall time tree. So you need to put some quite some water in here to get your orange color going. It wants to look wet and soupy. You can add another drop of water in there. And then we're going to start at the top of the tree and go around the edge of the branches just like that. Get your paint again. Go around the edge of your branches. Get a little more water in there. And go around the edge of your branches. Once you have that edge drawn or painted, you can add the color inside. And you can just paint however you like inside. You just make sure that your paint stays wet so that you can add some more next to it. You might want to also just take your paintbrush in the water and then paint it first inside the line and then go back and get your paint. That way it blends real nice and you don't end up with lines inside your tree. But wasn't that quick and easy? Quick and easy, one tree done already. What color should we do this one? Maybe a green? Green, like a wintertime tree. So remember to put plenty of water in, rinse your brush in between, and then put plenty of water in your little green section if you're making it green or whatever color you're making it. So that you have plenty of paint there. I'm gonna get some more water on my brush so that it's mostly water this time. And I'm just gonna follow the edge and try and touch every line that I drew, the little edges of the line. I'm gonna go back in my water again and get a very watery brush and touch the edges of your lines. I'm gonna stop here because see how my branches touch? I don't want the green bleeding into the yellow. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna come up from the bottom, from the edge and stay away from the yellow a little bit. I can come back in later and paint that later, but I don't want the green to bleed into the yellow. As long as I leave a little white paper there, it'll stop it. And then I can come in with my green paint and paint inside my lines. Maybe I'll change this a little bit. Go around, come down here, go around this branch a little bit. It needs to get a little darker. You want a little bit more color, you go back into your paint and get more color. And we have our second tree painted. So far, these look like realistic colors. We've seen trees outside in the fall that are yellow and trees with green leaves. Sometimes we wanna do something fun and interesting or silly. So this is my tree that I'm gonna do something silly and wait till you see what I do. I'm gonna get my paint. This is a purplish color. Oh, that's the blue. I did the wrong color. Well, it could be blue. Maybe it's winter with ice on it. Oh, I like that idea. And now since we have the berries on here, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna try and twist my paintbrush to make a circle. And that's how I'm going to make these areas of leaves. and make little circles. 
around the dots that I drew. And now I think this purple is looking rather gray, so maybe I will go back and use the blue. Ooh, that's blue. I'm gonna stay away from the green over there a little bit so that it doesn't bleed through. Maybe I'll take some of this blue away, put it on top of the purple. Add more water so it's a very light blue. The more water you put in the color, the lighter the color will be. So see, that's a watery-ish light blue kind of icy looking. We will have cold weather soon. And so you can just continue around making these circles of color on your tree. It's a little tricky to get it to circle around. And maybe I'll put some behind. Even though you don't see the branch there, maybe there's a branch there behind. So that is a very silly looking tree. I like that one, that's fun. And our last one, I think I will also do as green. To me, this looks like a green tree. And again, you're just gonna float your color down. I need a little more water. And then blend it. to blend it you can rinse off your brush completely so that it's just water and now just put the water touching the edges it's hard to even see but just touching the edges of where you want the paint to go this is a flooding technique you get your paper wet first and then you go back into your paint and then where you touch the paint, where you touch the water is where your paint is gonna go. It won't go outside that line. And you can see it kind of gets a little fuzzy. Over here where I didn't have as much water, it doesn't get as fuzzy. I'll put a little more water. And there you have your four different tree types. So I wanted to show you something else that you can do now that you know how to paint the trees and you have a little bit of extra paper with you. You can use your second piece of paper and you can put the trees in a scene. So you can draw some tree trunks that are maybe like we drew before, very up close. They start at the bottom of the page, so they're close to you with some branches on them. And you could also draw some trees that start more in the middle of the page. These are gonna be the ones that are further away from you. And maybe since they're further away, their branches are gonna be a little bit smaller. 
The ones up close have big branches. And the ones that are further away have little branches. So again, we can do that on this side. We can draw a tree that's right up close to us and it's big and tall and has a big wide trunk because it's close to us in the picture. And it's got some great big branches. We can color this in so that it goes to the tree. This is a big branch because it's close to us. See how thick that branch is? color in my tree trunk. Maybe this is like oh, lines or look like bark. We don't have to color the whole thing in. I can leave some like that. Get some branches out this side. Now that you have some different size trees, maybe we should do a little, little one. Let's try a little one right here. This one's very far away, so I'm going to keep it very skinny, too. Maybe it has branches from the very bottom. And now, in this open space in between the trees, you want to be able to, you can add some horizontal lines for hills or the ground below. So maybe, maybe even in the way background, there's sort of a mountain back here. Maybe down here, the ground is here. Maybe this one is on a hill over here. See that, how I connected the trees to the ground and now they look like they're further away than what's right here. I'll continue this, this hill goes behind that tree. And this hill will go behind this tree. You can also then, if this is the ground and the hills, this is the sky. And you can make little birds in the sky. But they're flying far away, so we're going to make a little dot and then an up-down on one side and an up down on the other side. And there you have a bird flying in the sky. The bigger birds will be closer and the smaller birds will be further away. So maybe by this tree, which is far away, we're gonna draw a tiny bird. This one is further away, it's a tiny little dot. And then a little up down and a little up down. That bird is further away. And maybe if you have, like me, a lot of room down here, maybe we wanna make a little squiggly line. And maybe this is like a, a pond or a little lake. And then you can use your watercolor paints to, again, create an area of color around your trees. You can put your water in. Get it all nice and wet with your water and then go into a color. And get your color and just tap it in and your color will flood into that area around the tree And this is how illustrators sometimes make the pictures that are in the books. So a folk artist might do some painting and make an illustration for the books that you read. And we'll do this little tree back here.
So you just take your wet paintbrush and go around all of your tree branches, making a watery area around all of your tree branches. And then get your paint and get it nice and wet so that you have a lot of the same color. And then you can just flood it in. And it kind of floats around in the water and gives your tree a little bit of color. You want to paint your tree trunk. That's trickier, you gotta stay in the line. But all of these different trees we can do, all of the different colors. So you can experiment. You have some paper there, and you have your paints, and you can make this as fun and whimsical as you want. Hmm, what color? Orange. And then you just float the color in. And it'll spread out into the water around your branches. I bet you didn't know you were so good at making trees. They look lovely, lovely, lovely. If you want to add some color to your ground, you can do it the same way. Add some water inside of your shape. Get your paint. Oh, look at that. I'm going to leave it just like that. That looks watery and icy. Your sky, you can make a little, just use some water in some of the areas. You wanna leave some of the sky plain white, because of course the sky is always a little bit different every time you look at it. Sometimes there's clouds, and then you can put some color in your sky here and there. So I hope you had fun here today doing your folk art tree painting. We learned some different styles in how to draw the trees and how to paint the trees. And we made a fun winter scene or maybe you made a springtime scene or a summer scene. And if you wanna share these with me, you can take a picture of your artwork and post it to social media and use the hashtag MC P L at home. Okay, I hope you had fun with this program and I hope you come in and see our exhibit, Tell the World a Story. You can register online, on the phone or in person for a one hour session in Museum Corner. You get a whole bin of things to use in Museum Corner. There's puppets, there's musical instruments, there's books, there's games to play um, and you get those items to use while you're here in Museum Corner. Um, you have an hour session, so come in with your family, um, and we'd love to see you. Be well. Bye.